Okay, so I don't know who my work works for and who my work doesn't work for. Um, I say this because I had uh, my best friend in high school uh, come to a class, and I don't, I don't think he had a magnificent experience. I haven't been in that much touch with him, and I will uh, go out of my way to get in touch with him, but I don't think that he had a like an experience that was life-changing or an experience that uh, altered how he will live his life. And it was comforting to me when I went to Korea and all of these intellectuals were uh, invited and I sat in a room with one of the intellectuals out of, I don't know, there were several, there were quite a few, there were 20 or 30 or some that were invited there. And I sat with a young man who he said, I'm more a practitioner than I am an intellectual. Uh, and he said, uh, and he had the experience. He got out of his own way in such a way that he had the experience. So I know that my work doesn't work for everybody. I know that my work, and I've known that over the years, and when it doesn't work, people seem to get, uh, you know, some people seem to take it real personal, like, oh, I haven't done my job. But I've seen people finish my class, swear that they've had no results, and everybody around them said, wow, they are so different. And I've had people do my classes and go out and notice how everybody around them is different, but they don't include themselves. They, um, one of my clients from uh, California, I think I told the story, came back in. I hadn't seen her for years. And she said, I just want to validate what you've been saying over the years. She said, I just spent three days with a man that I don't know. I never I never knew. And she said, I went out and my dad was dying. And I spent three days with him. And she said, I don't know who he was. She said, and I, I spent the last three days of his life with him. I couldn't leave the hospital. And she said, it wasn't Jewish guilt. She said, it wasn't because I was guilty. She said, I was so fascinated with who he was and who he'd become. Maslow talks about these altered states of awareness, and he said everybody will get to higher states of awareness. Uh, most people within three days or a week of their death, if they die naturally. And I used to think, well, you would get out there, and then you would be, if, once you got out of these states, you would be uh, remorseful about not having spent more time there. But I, what I've seen is people aren't. They like the fact that they're there. They like the fact that they're back on their own operating system. Their natural, normal self, the, the, the person that they came on the planet as. And it's a really delightful place. And uh, this gal validated it for me. She said, yes, what you're doing is working, and, and you're taking people out to these spaces early in your life. And I just want to appreciate you for that and tell you that my dad got there. And so, if y'all are looking for these higher spaces, these higher states of awareness, uh, <laughs> I, I wrote to a friend of mine from high school. We had our 40th high school reunion, and I told him what I'm doing. He said, I'm sorry, I'm just not that deep. And maybe it's depth. Maybe it's uh, depth that I want in my life. I don't know. Uh, I've said, I, uh, yeah, life is not worth, in, worth living it's, if it's not really intense. And, and uh, that's how I live my life. You know, we have six kids, we had two dogs, we got one, and one's on the way out, it looks like. You know, but uh, I came to live this lifetime intensely, and that's what I show people to do, how to do it. You know, how to live your life intensely, how to have fun, uh, because that seems to be a component that is missing from the traditional Eastern Enlightenment. I learned that from Martin Sage, and that seems to be because I talked about fun, and there doesn't seem to be even any relationship to it. Uh, my friend Simon and I laugh a lot. He didn't laugh a lot when I met him. He was very sick. I had been in the military. He had a good sense of humor, but didn't laugh a lot. We laugh a lot. We try to see if we can get each other laughing. And uh, that's part of our fun. I know it's not fun for everybody, but uh, one of the components of my work is that it's fun from the get-go. I have fun when I work. I enjoy you. I enjoy the participants. If you don't enjoy me enjoying you, then you've got a problem. That was a call that said dinner time. It's Friday night. It's dinner time. Have a fun evening. Have a great weekend. www.micperformance.com um, Notice and think there's more than fixing. It's my book. Have a great weekend.
live it like it's your last. It just might be.